In this video, we want to have a look at the key performance indicators of PV systems. You can see on the left-hand side, there are different uh, predefined diagrams of uh, key performance indicators which are used in the PV business. If the monitoring system does not provide these diagrams, you might need to calculate them on your own by downloading the raw data and prepare your own diagrams. Uh, in this case, um, this monitoring system provides you the main indicators and let's start with the uh, performance ratio um, and we are switching to the uh, total view as this is the, uh, the performance ratio is uh, first of all an annual value. What you can see in this diagram in red, that's uh, the energy produced within one year. And then these uh, yellow and red and green dots represent the performance ratio of the system. So you see in 2019, we have had an energy production of uh, 48.4 megawatt hours and a performance ratio of 86.0%. So that uh, corresponds to a very well running PV system. And then you can, can go back in the in time and have a look at what has been the performance ratio in the past. Do you see any degradation or um, effects of soiling of the modules, which you can see here in the year 2015, there has been an issue. Um, the performance ratio is below 65%, just 59.4%. Uh, so there has been a technical issue. We can have a look at and do an analysis. Of course, you can step over to the uh, monthly view. So in this case, the situation in 2015, 12, and let's get back to 2019. You see again the monthly energy production, and then you see this typical slope of or characteristic of the performance ratio during the year with the smaller values in winter time. Then this increase of the performance ratio in spring, a slight decrease uh, in the summer months, and then again an increase uh, in, in autumn, and then we are having the smallest value again in the winter month. Uh, so that is a, the condition of a very well-running system. So there's no issue that this uh, performance ratio in, in January or December is just 66%. That's, that's fine for January due to the um, radiation condition and weather patterns we have in January or, on the other hand, in December. Uh, more important, it's, it's um, that the performance ratio is above 80% in, for, from April to September, October. In this case, the system is running very, very well. And what we can do is we can have a look at the situation in 2015 in our case. So see 2018 is, is fine. 2017, uh, again, fine. You see the small values, uh, just 30% performance ratio. So that might be due to snow coverage in, in January 2017. And if we go back in 2016, for example, you see this bad performance ratio in the summer month in May and June, July, due to a technical issue or maybe a data communication uh, issue that might also be the problem that you don't get of the data from the monitoring system. And finally, in 2015, you see the reason uh, there has been a technical issue, obviously, um, until September 2015. So this uh, indicator helps you. Of course, what you can also do is you can uh, step over and have a look at the values for each month. So in this case, March 2020, you see um, the different conditions we've had, the energy production on each day in March 2020, the high performance ratio, of course. Now we have to um, be cautious as the performance ratio per day has no direct information that gives you just an indirect information about the condition of the system. Because if you go back, for example, in, in to January, you see this ups and downs of the performance ratio, you see this values of 62. That's fine in, in January. Um, it really depends on the radiation conditions during the winter time. So be very cautious with the performance ratio in, in winter month. Um, if you have a look at them at, on a daily basis, best idea is to use the annual value or at least the monthly values. One additional feature of this monitoring system is the variance analysis. So this analysis helps you um, to identify any issues by using um, 
yield simulation. So the system is using the PV configuration and radiation data to do a simulation uh, of the yield. And this uh, simulated yield is compared with the uh, with the actual yield of the system. So what you can see in this diagram for December 2019, uh, the bars represent uh, the produced um, uh, yield and these uh, areas, these colored areas represent the expected yield based on the simulation. So December is a very good example as we have these red bars um, showing that the actual yield is smaller than the expected one. Uh, of course, due to the weather and radiation condition, if we uh, go uh, into the summer uh, month, you see the different uh, conditions in the winter month. But if you step over uh, to see here April, everything is fine with green bars. This bar is yellow um, due to this uh, to, due to the restriction or the uh, inaccuracy of the simulation. But still, the system is running fine. If you step over to the annual view um, you will see that in 2015 we've seen this uh, um, technical issue but if we step over to the situation we are facing at the moment in 2020 everything's fine the system is running well we have had um, a yield which has been smaller than the expected or simulated yield in january and february that's no um, real problem but in march april may everything's fine and even in 2019, everything is fine um, from March or even from February until, until November. The system is running on the expected um, level, and um, this shows you that there is no major uh, malfunction of the PV system. Modern monitoring systems provide um, yield information uh, based on machine learning. So, what you can see. In this uh, diagram, you see this uh, uh, the solar power diagram. Let's step over to the year 2020. Um, you see these um, blue bars represent the energy, and then this uh, area, uh, this light blue area, represents the target range of uh, of the yield or the expected yield based on machine learning. So that's a new feature. Um, to derive what is the expected yield of the PV system based on uh, previous data and what uh, is the actual yield so that you can compare these, uh, this information and again derive any major issue uh, as any deviation would lead in a drop of, the, uh, of these bars and a drop of yield data. So that's, that's an, one important issue. Uh, you can use and more and more monitoring or professional monitoring system provide this information as one additional way to do a deep analysis of the PV system. The next diagram is the system efficiency. This diagram shows uh, the total efficiency of the system. And let's switch to uh, the day in, in May to get a better view on the efficiency. What you can see is that each black dot represents the efficiency uh, of one time step and the red dots represent uh, the efficiency uh, in the selected month. So now in, in June 2020 and what you see is you see this typical uh, characteristic of the efficiency of a PV system with the increase between zero and 50 watts per square meter irradiance and then this, ma this main characteristic with this drop uh, of the efficiency uh, due to the higher irradiance and higher uh, ambient temperature values uh, as higher uh, cell temperatures uh, lead to a decrease of the efficiency of the system. All these dots um, above or below this main characteristic are coming from um, different measurements uh, regarding uh, different weather conditions. So in this case, for example, bad weather conditions, system failure, or problems regarding the data communication. What you see main points are on this main characteristic with this increase and then this maximum at 300 watts per square meter and then 
on a constant level until let's say 600 or 700 watts per square meter and then this drop of the efficiency uh, to the maximum irradiance of 1100 watts per square meter um, irradiance. The input and output diagram shows you the ratio of the uh, irradiance to the AC power. So if we step over to the situation in, in May, uh, what you can see is the black dots um, represent the irradiance and the power. Um, so irradiance on the x-axis and the power on the y-axis. And what you expect is, of course, a more or less linear correlation between the power production or power generation and the irradiance. Uh, the red dots uh, show the values for the 31st of, of May 2020. And what you see is, of course, this increase. You see these dots, uh, which are uh, below this um, linear curve um, due to um, we have a less or a smaller power production uh, compared to the expected uh, power uh, due to the irradiance in the morning. The values are slightly higher due to lower cell temperatures in the afternoon when we observe the beginning of the sunset with higher ambient temperatures, higher cell temperatures, and that's, uh, that leads to a decrease um, of the power due to a less uh, efficiency of the cells. Um, and this diagram also helps you to identify uh, outbreaks of uh, the expected values in case of any uh, module defects uh, of uh, all cells. If there's a, a severe issue regarding the quality of the cells or the PV modules. So this uh, diagram helps you uh, to identify also long-term trends uh, of uh, decreasing power generation. Finally, we want to have a look at the heat map inverter diagram. So this diagram uh, shows us uh, the heat map in this case of uh, these three inverters. So the different colors represent um, the normalized AC power. Um, so the, the brighter the color is, the more uh, AC power is generated by each inverter. In this case, for the 31st of May 2020. Uh, of course, what you expect is that all three inverters run synchronously. Um, and if you go back in time, you see this, this drop um, due to smaller irradiance. But this diagram helps you uh, to identify a deviation within the uh, power generation of these uh, of the, the different inverters. This diagram is also very helpful if you have more than three inverters, five, ten, or even more. Um, you can compare this diagram with the um, data provided by the normalized um, energy diagram. Uh, that helps you to, to, to see are there any deviations, is there any issue regarding shading, for example, um, at this diagram. Diagram gives you a hint. Uh, where you have to ha have a closer look at the um, AC power generation of the uh, of the inverters.